What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be working on Finch, the AI finance app. I'm going to be adding a couple new features and one that I think is going to kind of take up a lot of time. For those who are new, my name is James. I'm a software engineer who's been making mobile apps for the past few years and I'm taking you guys through my journey of launching an app from start to finish so you can see every step of the way. First, I'm going to get a little workout in, so I'm going to drink some pre-workout because I need that caffeine. And then today, I'm just going to focus on Finch fully. It should be good. I'm going to be doing some back-end tasks. One of them is I'm going to allow a user to ignore a transaction and then also to change the spending bucket that the transaction is in. And then the other one that's not really back-end heavy is I'm going to allow the user to change their pay period because remember, this app is focused on budgeting your paycheck. So, see how it goes. I'm gonna get a little workout first and then I'm gonna just grind all day and night. Bought this cool little blender bottle that lets me just. I'm so lazy. But it was like 10 bucks. Not bad. Cool. Cool. Finished the workout, took Loki on another walk and ate some food. So now I'm gonna sit down and start the task. The first one is I had David add some new fields to the transaction request. So I wanna see if those map up correctly or if I get some errors. It's looking like I'm getting one error, but it seems simple so far. So I'm gonna fix that. And then I'm gonna allow the user to change the date, the pay periods. And I'm also going to allow them to ignore transactions and change the spending buckets. So that's what I'm going to try to grind out right now. And it should be good. After that, I'm also hoping to just push it to test flight and Android test environment. I forget what it's called. So that way we can start using it and then we can see how like useful it is before we send out the beta to everyone else. So remember to sign up for the beta. The link's in the description. And then that way we know kind of what features you guys like. But I'm gonna get started now.
Well, that took longer than I thought. I wanted to get a lot more done by now, because it's already pretty late here. But I got the transactions wired up to where you can update it, so you can change the category, and you can change the, you can ignore it, so exclude it, so that way it doesn't affect your numbers. That's just in case we miss anything, like if we get some bad data for some reason. I wanted to get the savings goal wired up, but I didn't get that done yet. I also ran into an issue where the back end actually isn't updating. So my, my API calls are going through, I'm not seeing an error, but for some reason when like after it goes through, the, it, doesn't, it doesn't give me a new category or it doesn't ignore the transaction. So the front end's all wired up though, so once my co-founder fixes that bug, it should just work. Next, I'm gonna try to just, I'm still gonna try to knock out the savings goal. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so data's still looking good. It's still plaid data though, so the numbers are a little bit off, but it's fine, that'll get cleaned up. Um, for now, we can come in here, we can go to spending, we can go to this test transaction, and then we can see that we can click like this, and then from here, we can see these different categories. Now, like, this is where I would want to be able to change this to, like, you know, recurring or something like that. Oh, I hit the break point. And then from there, it should update out here. Like, if I go spending and I go recurring, it should update, but it's not. And that's kind of one of the problems. Um, so, and then also down here, I added a little exclude button to where you can click exclude. And again, it's not doing anything. So, I want to fix those issues. But I'm just gonna have to wait for my co-founder on those. I'm trying to leave the backend stuff to him. What I'm gonna work on now is this savings goal. I want this to come from the backend. I have an endpoint for it. And then as the user drags and then they stop dragging, it will update the back <coughs> the backend. So <coughs> so that's what I'm gonna work on now. I'm hoping this is quick and I'm hoping it works. And we're kind of working separate, but and then just kind of communicating back to each other whenever we're done with something. If this doesn't work, then maybe we need to work a little bit closer, just so I know I'm getting what I need and he knows he's getting what he needs. So, oof. Maybe I'll also remove the sense from here because it's kind of making it ugly. Yeah, but cool, that's what I'm gonna do now. Cool, so got the savings goal done. I ended up causing a problem for myself by not reading my co-founder's documentation properly. By documentation, I mean the Slack message he sent me that told me how the endpoint works. I was passing things through the, through the URL instead of passing it through the body of the request. So I was getting errors like crazy. But once I fixed that, it worked perfectly fine. So I'll show you guys how the savings goal piece works now. All right, so from zero, right, or the user comes in, new pay period, they set their savings goal. Let's say I drag this up to, I don't know, this number. Once I let go, it saves, so I'll prove it. I'm gonna re reload the app, and boom, <coughs> it's still there. 
So a couple things that I did, I don't know if you guys care, but I'll share. On drag, nothing is happening in the back end. Like I just, this is just a UI component. Like I, I just wanted the number to go up. But as soon as you let go, boom, that's when it hits the API. So now it saves. So it kind of optimized that because it only saves at one time. Also, I got rid of the decimals here, which was just a nice to have thing. But I think I want this number to go up by like tens, not necessarily individual because it's too small. Like I can't, let's say I want to do 2000. It's really hard to get to that number. Like you see, it's really hard. So maybe I'll go by tens or 25s or something like that. And then the other thing I need to do is this number here, this needs to be affected by the savings goal. I need to have savings here as another metric because the save to spend is affected by the sa savings goal. Ideally, once you get paid, you're gonna come in here and then you can set your savings goal, let's say whatever this number is, and then automatically it will subtract from your income and your save to spend would be lower. That way, savings is already accounted for. Again, the money shifting of the transaction has to happen somewhere else, but still, at least the, uh, the goal is set. So I'm gonna see if I can get the savings goal in that save to spend graph chart component. And then I probably won't finish the date picker tonight, but it's okay. So we'll do that in another video or maybe, maybe I'll finish in the morning. I don't know, we'll see. Cool, I am done, I think, for the night. So, I'm happy with it. I got it, I got it working to where now when they drag, it'll update the value. At first, I put the value up there, but then after you drag the slider, it wasn't updating. And then I thought about it, I was like, okay, I could recall the method that loaded the page, but I didn't want it to show a loading indicator every time the user just changed the savings goal. So instead what I did was I just took the logic of the initial load method and created a helper function for it. So then I can recall that function anytime I want. And then after the savings goal, I recall the same method, but I don't set the state to loading. So just for that one piece, it's not loading, which, you know, I guess isn't the best, but I just wanted it to feel better. So I'll show it to you guys now. Remember, the number is a little weird. Don't worry about it. Just stick, just focus on the, um, the data. So cool, so 1750. Also, what I did was I got it to jump to increments of 50. So notice this increments of, sorry, increments of 25, which I feel like is reasonable. All right, here we go. So watch the chart. Boop, let's go bigger drop, bigger drop, boom. I am really happy with it. I wanted to do more with this guy today, but it is what it is. So not the best night for me. I wanted to get much more done, but I'm still happy with it. So again, like, subscribe, you know, hit the bell notification to get, see when I put out more videos. I'm going to be doing these more often. Uh, also sign up for the beta for this app. I want to get more information from you guys on like what features you're looking for and if you're interested in it i really appreciate everybody that's already signed up we've got a good list so far like a good like a couple hundred people so i'm excited about it so please keep following along